It's time for this week's Wrestling Perspective, the debut segment. We don't even have a name for it. We'll come up with something. Oh, no, I got, a, I got a name for it, bro. I've had a name for it for like a month. Fuck so a- please, Fuck Ace? No, it's not Fuck Ace. Oh, but it's cl- and it's nothing close. So go go ahead with your spill. Why don't you just introduce everybody besides Ace? I'll take care of that. Wrestling perspective, Dennis Farrell, Lars Fredrickson. Here in a few minutes, Jody Threat will be coming on from Impact Wrestling. Lars, this is you. Oh, so that was your introduction of That's it. Short, short and sweet. We have 10 Ace minutes with Ace. Fucking, I'm yeah. not wasting it. That's what the name of the segment is, is 10 minutes, 10 minutes with, with Ace. Ace. So every every month, once a month, at least, we're going to get Ace Steele here, uh, who is who is a consummate professional, who's been around the world with the sport of professional wrestling. Um, and we want to get like uh, in, an insider's look, so to speak, or at least we have someone we value his opinion. Uh, we value his friendship. Obviously, Dennis doesn't give a shit since he thought the name of the fucking show was Fuck Ace. Which just goes to show that, I mean, that could be the first question. Why do we hate Dennis so much? But that won't be. So That's easy. My, my question of the week uh, for this first segment is the NXT talent. There's so many guys and gals down there that you've trained. Yes. Um, maybe let's talk a little bit about them and what you see in them. Awesome. Um, so, Hello. Hi. Hello. Hopefully this is it called fuck ace from now on, but I can see how that goes that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, a little while back, I put a post on Instagram. I think it was around Mania weekend when I saw TakeOver and all this stuff. And if you think about it, I haven't been in NXT um, since, uh, what, 2022. And oh, I'm sorry, 2021, like late 2021. Um, but I saw one of the last tryouts that I was at. I saw people like Thea Hale. Uh, who is just now 19. Like, she hadn't graduated high school yet. Um, that wasn't the one, but in tryouts, for instance, I've seen Tiffany Stratton, who is now a, a, a prime focus on the show. Cora Jade, at some point, Chicago favorite. Um, she's from the hometown that we all love. Um, Bron Breaker, I was at his. Uh, Bronson Steiner, I was at his tryout. Like, we would do the tryouts, and the tryouts were grueling. They were very ball, they were just ball buster events. And you can see people that are ready to go. Like, for instance, Steiner himself, you know, he didn't have much training whatsoever, but he had some, you could tell. Like, but it's a no-brainer when he gets in the ring and runs the ropes, he runs the ropes like his dad. If you right. study wrestling like like we do, like, like, holy shit, he runs just like Rick Steiner, you know, and he, he sounds like Scott. Uh, I don't know if he does math like Scott, <laughs> but he certainly sounds like <laughs> But he's the blue chipper. You know, eventually it's going to hit. Uh, there's a guy named Tony D'Angelo. The, uh, the Italian guy, also a Chicago native. He kind of grew up watching wrestling, but wasn't a huge fan. Freaking natural. Natural doing this. So Tiffany Stratton, when she came in, was, I think, a CrossFit athlete, maybe. Mm. Um, I don't remember the background exactly, but I knew that. And I knew right away. I looked at her. I'm like, if they don't hire this girl, what the hell are they looking for? You know, because sometimes right. the tryouts were geared towards, <clears throat> excuse me, they were, toward, they were geared towards, we're looking for stars or we need people that you know could fill the roster you name it we're looking for referees this time point blank sometimes they're just having it to have it to see what's in the world and that you'd see people come back i saw joe gacy's trial i saw many people like that um so coming to fruition after a year of these people in especially with the new mandate of hey you're around nxt for two years and it's not really going anywhere they're going to cut them loose just like a football team or baseball team. And that really is your triple a at kind of at that point. So you're not, you're not going anywhere else. You're going back out into the world. And if you want it, you'll go after it. Um, Tiffany Stratton for one could do anything physically. It's just putting her mind to it, to the character and look what she's done. Just, just brilliantly, you know, she's back on TV after a, a little bit of a hiatus but she's got the character down and that's stuff you can't teach. Like, where is that? Like she's a quiet girl and she's not loud. She's not boisterous. You don't know she's in the room, at least from what I've seen when I was around her, but she pulled that character out when they said, you're going to be daddy's little girl. Well, that evolved. I mean, for the first time we were in a ring and I had one of her matches to produce and I was like, well, we don't see the daddy's little girl in you do something with a wrist lock. And when you hold the girl's you know, wrist and you look at her nails, comment on how bad her nail job is you know that's what a daddy's <laughs> little girl would do yeah shit like that and like ah oh. so you like those pieces and parts came together 
and they didn't have now they're back doing the coconut shows which are the, the local florida shows are what they're called we were just doing live events in the pc itself so somewhere whether the main arena where they shoot tv just, or just just real fast for the listeners pc what are you the performance you center the Thank wwe you. performance center down here in orlando um a former coach there and coach producer at nxt and now it's level up uh but 205 was, was hot and heavy then but it would just be a, a closed environment like they were they were stuck wrestling in front of their peers which is really really hard um i've been involved in that before you know a show way back in the day hey we understand you have an experience you have experience can you make this guy you know, we want to see what he can do and then next thing you know i'm in a dark match with this guy to see if you can bump and blah 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 but you wrestle in front of the you know the agents the wrestlers so on and so forth very nerve-wracking but a girl like her you know hit it hit, hit it right out of the park i should say and just just head on joe gacy took to it i had his first television match what do i do what do i you know where do i go what do i do and i'm like and this is where the indie mindset when you're doing television you've got five minutes six minutes whatever your time frame is you know every step counts you know every step across the ring to pick someone up every time you ram someone in the buckle you want to throw two more punches that counts so seeing joe gacy evolve to where he's at now having his own little faction um with former gyv and uh and uh, ava rain which is simone johnson um just seeing stuff like that come to fruition grayson waller grayson oh. waller i was his day one coach at the performance center um i don't think he minds me saying that at all you know um i still I, i'm not going to say i have a day-to-day rapport with these people but i'm on great terms like you know they thank me for all the things they're so awesome about that. Like, and that's the other great thing about wrestling is that if you have somebody that's a sponge and they're thankful for it, you know, I don't need to pat on the back from him someday. He, he's, you know, out in the world. Like if he's excelling, hell, that's great. And then look at him now. He's on SmackDown right now. Killing, like he's great on the mic. The minute they gave him an opportunity, took off with it. Um, the other one I can think of is uh, he was Anthony Bravado and now he's Andre Chase. He was one of the Bravado brothers, maybe an Evolve. He's been around the world. It, it's no secret, at least it's been written up, that there was a lot of guys from Evolve that got hired, and they were told they'd be mechanics. They were told they'd be mechanics, and they were told they would come in to help make the talent they wanted to push, to make you know help them learn, and to you know just elevate those people. And I had a class of all the independent guys. Uh, Anthony Henry, who's now with AEW, our Ring of Honor, you know, floating in that, um, had Grayson Waller. He was an independent guy in Australia. Uh, Joe Gacy at some point came to class. But, but the bottom line is I looked at them all and I said, you guys know what you're here for. You're hired as utility guys. Don't, don't take that as you don't have an opportunity. You have an opportunity every time you go in the ring. And a lot of people would shit on the fact that they had a 205 live match, depending on who it is. I'm just on 205. No one watches that. If you ever looked at the views on 205, it's on Hulu. I have a nephew that once upon a time used to watch SmackDown on on uh, YouTube. And I'm like, what, what is he watching? He's watching, like, not great wrestling that was happening at whatever time period. Like, he was just watching anything that was wrestling when he was younger. And so Hulu, they get a lot of views. A lot of people watch that show. And the thing I would always tell them is 205 are now level up. It's shot in the same building that NXT is. Uh-huh. So in the corner where you used to sit, Hunter, uh, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels, and at times William Regal. Maybe they weren't there the whole time when 205 was happening because they were getting ready for NXT, which went live as 205 was a tape show. But they could look up and see that monitor and see who's doing good and know who's doing what. And I mean, you could steal the show. And a lot of these guys did. Blake Christian did at one point, who's now at AEW. He did eventually get let go, but look at him. Look at him blossom. Alex Zane who is now out there going at Noah. Anthony Green is in Noah right now. Like these are guys, again, hired to be the mechanics and they took the experience and went out and exp- expanded on that. Um, well, Luke, well Ace, focus- Ace, yeah. Ace, you're over we're at 10. 10. You're, we're over 10 now. So we're going to have to tighten you up. Next question, maybe next month, we're going to be covering to- topics from maybe gold dust face paint to if Dan has an... Dan Housen has nipples or not, and mm. or or maybe even like CM Punk's tattoo choice, who knows? Or is he or is he a fat fuck? I don't know. 
But in, uh, either oh. way, I, well, you know what? He's my friend, your friend. He can sue me, whatever. But Ace, Ace. inaugural 10 minutes with Ace. It was fucking awesome. We're going to see fuck you. Ace. That, fuck, fuck Ace. No, not, no, we love Ace. But thank oh. you, Ace, for taking the time out of the day. <laughs> and this is exactly what we needed. So it's a 10-minute time. Whatever you say in that 10 minutes is going to be news to our ears. So thank you, Ace, for taking the, the, uh, the time and coming and visited, uh, visiting us on The Wrestling Perspective. Dennis, what do you got to say? You're going to insult him before he leaves? Nope. I, all I was going to say was Petey Williams who? That's how yeah. good this yeah. was. Yeah. Here, yeah Petey. Here's my choice of the week. Uh, I purchased this off the eBay in there honor of superstar Billy Graham passing, but it's got the great Harley race on there. Just want to bring that up and y'all should get a bell and ring it when it's 10 minutes. Ah, Ace, you know what? Ace, get your own bell and you can time yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> How about if I get the, I got a cowbell. How about if I find the cowbell? All right. even, it, even better. As much as I'd like to play with you more, Ace, this was great. <laughs> we have Jody Threat coming on in a couple seconds. Ace, thank you so much. Where can people find you super quick? Uh, at Aces of Steel on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, but I don't really look at it. So go to Instagram. See the All fun right. stuff. See the dogs. Lars, many months ago, I want to say it was last year, you and I had a conversation about our guest, Jody Threat. And I said, uh, I want to say this was probably before Dark, her Dark match. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, it's going to be about a year before I really feel like she's going to break out and be a big star. You're like, dude, shut the fuck up. I bet you mid-year, maybe even at the beginning of the year, this girl has superstar written all over her. I right was up. wrong. Lars, you were right. Here she is sitting in front of me right now so I can eat my crow because I know you <laughs> had the talent. I just thought mate, it's like a minor league baseball prospect where you're like, all right, two years away from being blown up a superstar, you – you're like Mike Trout to me. I don't know if you're a baseball fan or not, but trust me, that's a compliment. Uh Thank you so much for taking some time to talk to Lars and myself tonight. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Pretty you stoked. Know, I, I will say the first time you came on my radar would be during COVID. It was fun to watch these like backyard wrestling segments uh, out of Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I I was watching these things come into place because there was like hardly any wrestling or at least – you know, uh, entertaining wrestling because without the crowd, it was tough. But, mm. I, you know, I want to kind of talk about this back because these videos are so great, so fun, so entertaining. I don't know if you've ever seen them, Lars, but uh, I have to ask you, how did this backyard wrestling thing come about? Because, like I said, it came through my feed. I started watching it whenever the, you, the guys put them out, and it was so fun and enter entertaining. Well, it obviously stemmed out of uh so in canada we were locked down um like severely more than anything that anywhere in america uh, experienced uh so much so that like we could not train um we couldn't go to the gym nothing like that so uh it was von vertigo who's like an indie wrestler here in ontario um he just needed like a creative outlet and a lot of us were like really suffering and uh it was his sort of masterpiece his idea and he just set up these little matches that we would do in outdoor spaces where we were allowed to actually meet up in small numbers because we were very limited I think at, uh, it was like maximum five people uh, at any given time so um, the shows that were put out were actually like a bunch of different days that we filmed and it kind of came out of that well you know no. I I watch you in the ring and I watch you perform and it, there's something very I don't know, mature about your style, about your ring presence, about the way that you see things, your psychology. Um, I mean, and one of the logical questions that, that I hate asking, but I'm going to have to ask in this case is um, because you seem like an old wrestler, like plopped into the to the modern day. What, what Was professional wrestling something that you grew up watching? Because it seems like it it's in your blood in that sense. Okay, your minds might be blown, but it was literally maybe seven years ago that I started getting into wrestling and it was by accident. Oh, well then tell us the story. Yeah. My mind is a little bit blown. You can't tease us like that and then yeah. just be like, this by accident. Next question. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so seven years ago, my little sister had a really bad breakup. Um, and so I was just, we were from Toronto. So we, it's a great nightlife. Um, 
So I was like, okay, let's just go out and have a good time, you know, wander around Toronto, who knows where we'll end up. So we we're sauntering around like uh, Queen West, which is like one of my favorite areas to hang out. And um, there was literally a sandwich board, like one of those like, you know, triangle handwritten boards uh, outside of the Great Hall, which is like a sick venue in Toronto. And it said live pro wrestling. Um, we looked at each other and was like, I don't know, do you want to go? Uh, and we, you know, kind of stumbled in after a few drinks and went downstairs to this like area that I only known for like music. And there was a ring plopped in the middle and just people all around. And I was like, what the hell is this? Uh, and literally music hit and two guys came into the ring and it was love at first sight. Um, it was almost like one of those like moments where like I'm standing, I'm like, Oh my God, like, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. How do I do this? And I like turn my head this way. And there was like a pillar with like, uh, just a printed sign on the pillar saying, do you want to be a pro wrestler? Sign up here. Uh, and yeah, so I kind of, I stumbled into it that way. I started training before I even really watched, uh, wrestling. It was a lot of live indie wrestling that I first started watching before I started really studying and uh, enjoying it. You, know, It might be like a golf swing where everybody says, and you know, if you, if you've kind of been taught how to swing, you're swinging wrong. If you've never been taught and then you go and you do it right, you, you get it right. Do you think that was a benefit to you not having watched wrestling throughout your life to start with this fresh blank slate? Or do you feel like you were kind of behind everybody else and you had to play catch up? Um, Hindsight. I think it was an awesome thing, but uh, in my training, I, it was really hard uh, just because there's like a, a lot of jargon and pieces and references that like I was completely clueless. And honestly, my first school, um, the trainers were assholes uh, and kind of made me feel really bad about not having the backing of being like a, a fan my whole life. Um, so like getting up into actually being able to wrestle, it was really hard. But now that I reflect back, uh, I kind of like it because I, I I studied it like uh, I studied it like it was something I was learning in school. Uh, so I think I approached it with a passion, like a burning passion, because I was like hot off that, like watching it live. Like I said, having that aha moment. This is what I'm supposed to do um, to just like diving into it head first, training, watching everything, loving it. I, I have a uh -huh. follow up. And yeah, I just have to ask because I'm a sissy. Like I have zero pain threshold as someone who is getting into the industry when, and, and I watch a lot of your stuff. Yeah. When, when do you realize, I think I can take some of these gnarly bumps that like the, not even the average male wrestler will take and you're taking them like a champ. Like, do you stumble into that kind of stuff? Uh, well, I come from like a, an athletic background. So I played 10 years of varsity, like rugby, wow. um, so yeah, I'm used to getting, you know, speared into grass uh, quite frequently, not to mention I skateboard it for years too. So you kind of just learn to tumble and get back up. Oh, it's cool guys. Uh, so I think it really helped that I'm kind of a rough and tumble sort to begin with, uh, not to mention many years in the mosh pit, uh, I think really prepared me for it. So. Well, that's one, one of the things that I definitely noticed about you straight from the get go is your physicality. Cause it's not like, you know, when you throw a punch, a forearm, something like that, you lay it in there. It doesn't look like, you know, that you're a fitness model trying to do this. It looks like you're a legit tough broad going in there. It's no, you know, no, you know, slander here, but you know what I'm saying? Like you look like you can handle yourself. So um, do you feel like it was easier for you because of the physicality that you experienced playing rugby, skateboarding, because falling sucks. I don't care how old you are. It sucks. Do you yeah. feel that that helped you sort of, you know, absorb the bumps, you know, get in there and be more physical as a wrestler? Oh, 100%. There's not even a doubt in my mind. And I really am noticing it like, uh, so I've taken a bit of a leadership role in, in one of the schools that I train at where I'm helping out a lot of the female uh, wrestlers and even some of like the new guys too. And just seeing those that in general have a bit of an athletic background versus those that don't. Um, it's something called like physical literacy. It's almost like people don't understand how their bodies move or operate or how to do things. Um, and it's like very notable in like me watching people. And like I said, like, I know I've, I've been very lucky to pick up things like fairly quickly. 
No two Jody Threat matches are the same. I, if you go and watch one match or another, you can you can grapple, you can do hardcore, you can you know go face to face with the biggest of them all, and it just it looks amazing. When you are building the Jody Threat character, how much thought did you put into being able to do all these kind of different styles of matches? Uh, honestly, not much. It, it's just I do what I like to do. So if I don't like to do it, I, I don't do it. Like I um, like my training has given me like a, a wide repertoire of things to do and like all the seminars I've went to. But it's really anything that I like to do. I try to implement it. And I think part of it, too, is um, I, I feel uh, like I like being able to do different things, like to have a similar match or a similar style it just becomes so repetitive in my brain and it, I, I don't like it I like to explore different things and I, I really 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 try to um, collaborate with who I'm working with um, just to have like that difference in matches like I think that's what's kind of beautiful about wrestling is that like you it's not just me it's myself and a partner and we're supposed to be creating this beautiful thing so I, I really think like matches should, should be a a collaborative uh, effect and I think maybe that's why you see such variety in my work is because I'm trying to collaborate well you know you talked about going and watching the independent wrestling and that's kind of like what sort of inspired you to do this now you're yeah. you know with probably i think the best wrestling company that's on tv right now impact wrestling and i say that all the time just because the storylines are there the psychology is there the um physicality is there um did you find you know that it was sort of a a, a hard transition now you know staying a lot of the times indies teaching this this thing and then getting into the front of the camera because i know it's somewhat of a different process at when you're building a match um was that a hard transition for you uh so i'm still very much in the beginning phase of uh doing the tv i think i'm maybe a, a month in at this point mm -hmm. um what i feel so lucky about is at impact it just feels like everyone's there trying to make you win mm -hmm. uh it really does feel like a team and i feel like i've been so supported like obviously it is a, a big leap but like josh alexander is like oh. my trainer so i have him there backing me uh you have like some of the best minds that are there in place that are are like that's their job is to make sure that you're succeeding mm -hmm. um like lance storm is sick like his job's so cool not only does he produce um but he's in there also uh helping with the matches and then he sends you this feedback after your matches and that's kind of like how I learn um, is like having my stuff like ripped apart. Like that's, I'm very much, and that probably comes from like my athletic background. Like I, I like critique and he does such a good job at like articulating exactly what it is you need to do to, to do better, to make it different. And um, like, I just think that I'm so lucky to be at impact because they have, they're giving me the tools to be able to succeed in that transition. Mm -hmm. We're in this new age where it's easy to be seen by companies with all the social media, YouTube, uh, TikTok, Twitch, all this stuff. But it's harder to pull yourself apart from the pack because everybody's doing it. Right. You you show up at Impact. Uh, is there like a, a, a period there where you're kind of like, maybe I'm not ready for this? Or were you like from day one? I'm ready. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to succeed. Uh, well, you always, at least for me, like you always question yourself, but like I said, like, I'm so lucky that I'm, I'm going into such a good locker room where everyone really wants you to win. And I've had like a few people like come up to me and give me the talk, like you're here because you deserve to be here. There's limited spots. You were selected because they want you to be here. And, um, I really like hold that close to my heart. And um, so, no, like, I feel like I I'm meant to be there and I feel like I will succeed. Um, that women's locker room is like, like, I'm so excited to just learn. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think we're good. <laughs> well, no, it's definitely the women's division and impact has historically been the best place for a woman to go and be a professional wrestler. Um, I don't think that either any company can hold a candle to the women's division uh, of impact. Um, 
when you, I know it's only been a short seven years, or maybe it feels like a long seven years for you in your career. When you first really got the bug and you're kind of like, okay, you know, I'm learning and maybe I have to do some deep dives because you seem like, you know, to me, I'm, maybe I'm reading you wrong, but you like to deep dive and know everything about something if you get into it. Am I correct? Uh, yes, it's pretty accurate. Okay. So I can tell. So what what are what matches are you going to watch now what are you now trying to dig up what are what are you going uh, you know what kind of wrestling are you watching are you going japanese stuff are you going mostly women's stuff or are you going stuff from the 80s like what what is your learning curve here everything i'm just consuming 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 and if something sparks me i'll go down that rabbit hole and then you know i just i go with the flow and it's just anything that anyone like i always tell my friends like if there's something that you see that you think would really suit me or is my vibe please send it to me uh so there's like real there's no real order to what i'm doing it's just like throw it at me and what sticks sticks i'm a guy that uh whenever like we make news i go and i read about it and Last year, you had a match in AEW. Uh, at the end of that, I don't need to know how the sausage is made. I don't want to know any of the politics. You get home, you're done. Right, wrong, and different, I don't know. But you start seeing you're making buzz. Now, is this at that point the first time that you're like, holy cow, I'm making buzz? How do you handle that from, from you know somebody that has scraped their way up? Is there like a mental health aspect to this where you're just like, what the F is going on here? Um, <laughs> so I, I don't really pay attention too much to social media. So at first I didn't even really understand, like I didn't notice anything. And then I had a bunch of people start texting me and like, yo, like, what, what is this? What's going on? Like even some of my, like my non-wrestling fans, uh, friends. And uh, I, like, I had to actually like kind of log in and look and be like, oh shoot. And then I noticed that like, a bunch of new followers and that sort of thing. So um, I, I don't think it really uh, affected me too much in the sense of um, mental health. Like, I guess it, it got a bit stressful at times just because people are trying to dig at, at stuff. And like, I don't really care to engage um, in, in that way. Um, but honestly, I, th I thought it was kind of cool. Like I said, I like gained like something like thousand followers in a few days i was like yes please now buy my merch <laughs> book me yes <laughs> well you know that's kind of in a lot of ways like dennis was saying it's like the social media aspect of everything you know it affects everything i mean even companies look at social media and book their fucking shows because of comments on twitter and it's fucking stupid right so it's like yeah. especially if you're a real wrestling fan um, and I think it's fucking dumb. And I think that everybody on Twitter who wants to be a booker fucking can go blow a horse or whatever. So, but I mean, when it comes to this and this immediacy about, you know, winning and losing and, and all these things, how do you sort of, what kind of, how do you mentally prepare? Cause like you said, you don't engage. And I love that because I never engage with negativity um, or I could, I'll just tell them to blow me or whatever, but like, how <laughs> do you, how, either way so but how do you uh, mentally prepare or mentally how should i say have that boundary between you know the the social media and your and what you're doing as a professional wrestler because i know a lot of people are affected uh i think i'm lucky i came in like i i'm I'm a bit older. Like, I think that's another thing people don't realize. Like I started training like quite old uh, in comparison. Um, and so I lived life before there was social media. And I think that <laughs> has honestly like helped. And <laughs> I'm only on social media because of the wrestling and understanding that like you, like they go hand in hand. But I think that's where the boundary is for me. And uh, in like my nine to five, like Monday through Friday job, um, I work a lot with like youth and stuff and that's been something like deconstructing that with right. them has been also helpful for me. Like, because I'm like, yo, someone needs to hold it together for these, these youngins. So they know that like yeah. life is not what you see on the screen. 100%. You're, you're yeah. living the dream in a major company and uh, Lars and I, we love to know sometimes uh, how that stuff comes about. Right. What was your reaction when someone comes to you and says, Hey, uh, I know you've only been doing this for X amount of years, but Impact Wrestling is interested in you. How did that whole thing 
you know, come about? Um, it was like a, a, a DM, like Scott literally slid into like my personal DMs that I had him uh, on like my my Facebook from before I did a seminar a few years ago for him. And he's like, he basically asked like, how would you be interested in working for Impact? And I literally at first was like, does someone hack his account? Like, <laughs> And then, yeah, the rest is obviously history. I was obviously well, hyped. It's, well, of course you were hyped, but like, you know, what are the conversations? Like, you know, is it like, you know, when was, how did it all manifest? Because obviously you said you maybe had done something from it with him before. Yeah. So from my, I guess um, they must've been looking to fill, like, it, it seems like I, I'm still learning the stuff about impact, but it seems that they really like to use who they have. So they don't over um, sign because they want to be able to use their roster. So from like conversations I've had with him and other people, it just seems that uh, they really take their time and who they choose to bring on to the team. Um, and so uh, I guess I must have been like on the radar for a hot minute. And um, I, I think leading up to it, now this is me thinking, I had like some matches on the indies uh, that went really well with some of the girls that are on the roster. So I feel like that must have played a part in it like them saying like oh Jody can actually go like maybe you should consider um and then uh yeah I like I said it was I was blind so I didn't even expect it it was just a random dm that came my way and I was like yes <laughs> so you, you you I watched a lot of your stuff up in Quebec and uh I have I think Lars and I both know people that have been in Quebec or played hockey or whatnot. One of my buddies, a former NHL guy says, you know, it is such a hard crowd to get over with. When you go up there for maybe the first time, does somebody come up to you and say, Hey, uh, these Quebecians are kind of a different breed of wrestling fans. You have to do something a little bit different because, you know, Montreal, Quebec, the French speaking territories up there, hard nuts to crack. <laughs> <laughs> that, the laugh says it all. <laughs> no, we don't get no warnings, but we know what we're getting into. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, do you find that wrestling in front of, I mean, you're obviously, you know, up there in Canada, there's, it's a big fucking country. Um, is it, it, are they different crowds for you? I mean, I know for me, the, the French side, it's passionate in a whole different way. Do you find the same way with, with the wrestling fans? I don't know. Um, I, I, I feel like at least, okay. So like pre pandemic versus post pandemic in Canada just, just seems to be two separate things. Like it just okay. feels like after the pandemic, indie wrestling is hot from coast to coast. And I can say confidently coast to coast because I've been, you know, maritime straight through to uh, BC. Um, it just, it, I feel like it does not matter. Like everyone is just so hyped to have that wrestling happening. Uh, and I feel like I'm, I'm super lucky where I've been booked at like really good promotions from coast to coast where like the reception has always been so warm. Uh, and uh, I guess my, like my character type uh, really works with what um, the vibe is um, because I truly like from coast to coast, I just feel so welcomed. Who helped you build the Jody Threat character? Because I, you know, there, everybody says sometimes it's you know their personalities turned up to ten. There are people that are like, I'm not whoever I portray in the ring, and being taught how to wrestle and being taught the creative side are two different things. And a lot of times we hear like someone totally different helps them build up and create that character. Uh, I struggle with it still. Um, what you see is is me just like cranked up on like usually rain energy drinks truly um but like the gimmick so my original gimmick if you will was more of like a, a skater girl which I did not want to do I wanted to keep my skating life right out of wrestling because they were two separate passions and I didn't want them to bleed so much into each other but my uh my first trainer um before I got to Josh was uh very adamant about me trying it out as a gimmick just because it, it was so much a part of me and I could do some cute little spots on the outside with my board like I used to hit like a, a head scissor off my board as well like a lariat spear all these sorts of things and it set up for like really cool um cutoffs as well um but like I said it, it didn't if like I said it different different for me I didn't want to exploit that part of me 
And so it always felt really, really awkward. And I spent so long trying to like shake that board because again, I really didn't want to bring that into this world because wrestling for me, I have to keep it separate from real life, Jody. Um, and so with that, uh, what actually happened was um, one of the girls from NXT who was on the Indies, who I did wrestle, uh, stole the skateboarding gimmick. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, now I can drop it. And then I just went straight into like truly like, uh, you know, 16, 17 year old Jody hopped up on rain energy drinks. I know that girl who stole your gimmick. So, um, <laughs> you know, um, well, would you say that, I mean, I know that that part of your personality is not, but I can tell that there's somewhat of your personality in your character, that it's not that far off. It feels like maybe turned up 10. So, yeah. you know, I, I feel like you're kind of the real deal. I don't think I would connect with your style or who you are if you weren't gritty and real. So, yeah. you know, wrestling, obviously the character has to develop. It has to sort of blossom and go into different directions. Have you been that concentrated on that or has it all been about just getting to that place um, to be, you know, in a company like Impact or something like that? Has been that the main focus and, you know, or is the character development a focus as well? My main focus was to be the best wrestler that I can be in ring. Um, that has been my primary focus always. Um, and then I, I think maybe, like I said, like uh, the whole character thing I'm still working on. Uh, and you always are, you're always evolving. Um, but I sometimes I wish I did spend a bit more time on that. But I guess it kind of works that I am a little more authentic um, because I don't really have to try too hard to to put over the character because, as we said, it's, it's just me hyped up. You, you know, everybody comes into a company and their ultimate goal is to be on top, win the gold. But how do you, uh, still kind of being new to the TV side of things, uh, set goals and, and and try to reach them either match by match, show by show, year by year? Say that one more time. So uh, everybody wants to come into a company and be the top star and win gold. But as you grow, how do you set your goals to get to those places? Well, my goal is always just be the best that I can be. Like you can't, you can't focus on, like you don't control where you're going per se, but in a company like that's, you know, there's a lot of politics that go into that. A lot of things, a lot of different stuff that, like I said, I don't have control over. What I have control over is making sure that I produce every time that I'm given an opportunity, I nail it. And that that's my focus. And that's always been my focus. So are there, you know, are, I mean, are you in a place now where now that you found somewhat of a home with Impact Wrestling, you know, does your focus shift now? Because you were saying something like, you know, I just want to be the best in-ring talent. Well, I think you're damn close, right? So now when does the next uh, part for you? Because I know for me, and it's never been about being, um, you know, I've always moved very methodical through my life, you know? Uh, and I've done what's what's right for me at that time. But there always has to be a thought process about, you know, uh, developing what where I'm going to go next as far as musically, whatever it may be. Um, those times, I think, have been right on time in the sense where do you feel like you've accomplished being the best in ring now that you can move on to something else? No, I think I still have a lot of room to grow in that area. Um, if we want to talk like really like what my long term, like how what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to connect with um, specifically a, a group of w like women who are maybe not represented so much in wrestling. Like that's like where my focus is more big. Like I would love well, to What be is that? What is that group? Let's get specific. Um, I guess just more like how like how would I even describe it's just a more rough sort of person where it's like, I don't have to rely on that sex cells. Like uh, I, I feel like my character is not really sexualized. However, I did recently find my feet on feet wiki, which kind of shook me a little. I did like great I just, website, great website. I go there I, daily. I don't know. I was like, what? I, I didn't, I, I don't even know when this picture was taken. Like I, I respect whoever found it and put it up there. But really, it's just. <laughs> you respect them. I respect 
they like the hustle because they must have like dug that somehow I don't know but truly it's just I, I know I'm a bit different like I like truly like I'm not here to impress and woo um I I look at wrestling more I guess athletic than I do creative even though it's a combination of both but maybe it's because I came from such a heavy athletic background like that's that's what I want maybe more of like a like a like obviously I'm feminine but like there's a, a lot of like masculine energy that comes out of me like I'm I'm one of the boys if you will like I, I have a lot of girlfriends but I also have like a lot of boyfriends um to also have that energy and like um I'm a, a straight like cis female but still being able to put off like I, I feel like I'm not like a, a stereotype like I'm kind of like I'm weird but like in a different way, you know, like, I don't, I don't know how to. <laughs> well, you're not fucking weird. I'm that's for sure. I think you're, you know, I feel like you, you, you are already different. And that's the reason why I think people are gravitating to you. That's yeah. the thing. I think, you know, why me and Dennis gravitated to you. It's because you, you have that thing that you're not, you're not the stereotypical yeah. women's pro wrestler but you're not the the non stereotypical you, you you're somewhere in the middle there um yeah. and we're just trying to we're, we're just trying to pick your brain to see where the hell you're going you're not yeah, giving I, a I shit don't no know. you're not giving a <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah, i'm punk rock lars i'm punk i understand rock. i understand <laughs> you protect i get it i get it i get it i get it you, you got your cards right by right here you can keep your cards right here I understand. I totally get it. We're you good. Know, yeah. Along those same lines, though, I I gotta know what do you do? You know that one match where you feel like you put everything together, where it was the entrance and maybe a promo and in ring work and, and just that that first match where you f left that match going that might have been my perfect match at that point. No, I don't see perfection in me. I don't. I always just see like, and again, maybe this is like a flaw. Like I'm, I'm. Give us a match. I, I, <laughs> no. Give us a match. Come on. Give us no. fucking Jody. Give us like a key. goddamn match. Uh, there's key matches along okay. my career. Like I said, I'm always growing. So when I was like maybe five months in, I actually had a match against Josh. I was no business being in a ring with Josh five months in, and that was one of those moments where like, oh. Oh, oh, okay. I did something good here, but I have so much work. I have so much work to do. And then I had like uh, another match with like, I think it was like Lefisto, like later in that summer. And I was like, okay, okay, I see where I'm going. And then I had a match with like Chris Statlander, like a few, like a little bit later. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, here's something else that suits. And then I, I had like, uh, it was awesome. Like uh, SummerSlam came to Toronto. So uh, they tried to do the thing where they have like a bunch of different promotions come in and Tony Storm came in with progress. And so I was able to wrestle Tony Storm uh, representing Smash Wrestling. And that was like another moment where I was like, oh, oh, OK, like I'm, I'm traveling. And then I think it was like in, like the ending of the pandemic. I kind of ran away from Canada for a few months and um, I got to go to Shimmer, which I feel like uh, I'm so lucky that I'm one of the last generations because Shimmer is not happening anymore that got to experience Shimmer because it's one of those things that I feel like is a rite of passage. And I had a match with uh, uh, Mercedes uh, Martinez there. And that was another one of those moments where it's like, oh, shit, like, let's fucking go. Like, I maybe I can do this. Maybe I can hold my own. And the rest has just been but 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 different opportunities and i just i could feel myself growing you know do you feel there are any aspirations to be a world champion for you uh obviously that would be sick that would that opens more doors for more opportunities and more more room to grow um but again like my aspirations is just to to fucking kill it like to just do the cool stuff to get her done wherever that leads me to meet as many weird people uh you know my kind of people you know uh <laughs> just to fill like a void that maybe hasn't been filled before and to really to just show people like you can you can do this and not fall into like the expectation like I don't know like of course I I would love to hold the belt well you know I know you come from a punk rock background and I know personally that we kind of think about things a lot differently we approach things a lot differently very unconventional the way yeah. that we look at marketing or performance or whatever the fuck music whatever it is yeah. and, and it's definitely like an outsider's view on society 
Do you think that that kind of thinking and that approach to life, because that's that's that was that's a lifestyle, right? Um, yeah. Do you, do you think that that's helped you uh, in the world of professional wrestling, not to get trapped up in all the bullshit? I think it has, and again, coming into it a bit later in life, uh, I had like those morals and values were like ingrained in me. So, like in the, sometimes, like even with having that in me, you have these weird thoughts like, oh, maybe maybe I should try it the way that people have been doing to be successful for many years. Maybe I should try it that way. And like the representation. Um, but then again, like giving myself a shake and like understanding like who I am, like I, right. I can't, I can't, I will not. So right. yes. Okay. I, I know we're getting to the end and it leaves for my last question. It's not a question, but it's an observation. And from this interview, uh, I've noticed that you have this confidence that it, Lars and I, we've interviewed hundreds of people, and I'd say probably 70% of them don't have that confidence, whether after the interview. I would say it's, I would say it's a higher percentage, honestly. Dad. I was just trying to be nice, but yeah. yeah. But after the interview, they're like, was that good? Or, you know, I, I you know, they, they kind of tiptoe or pussyfoot around, but you were very confident in who you are, how you approach things. Is, is that something that was learned or developed or because I'm blown away by how I don't know if it's mature or confidence, but you're sitting here talking to us and I'm like, this girl's talking to me like she's been here 20 years. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I think it's just maybe a, a combination of things again, um, being uh, I am mature, like I, I'm an adult. Um, Congratulations. I, I, Thank you. I've survived this long. Uh, you know, I've lived through some shit. Um, <laughs> you know, like even just um, like I said, my nine to five work, it uh, it really does keep me humble and understand like what life is. And I think um, that's a part of it, too. And just like a bunch of stuff, you know, like I've lived a bit of life. So I think with that comes a bit of confidence in who you are. Right. I guess I just want to know if your sister ever healed about that broken heart, you know, after pro wrestling. Cause I, for oh, my yeah. opinion, thank I'm... God, man. <laughs> Bro, I, you don't even know. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Okay. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Let yeah. me tell you what he ended up showing back at her apartment. I friggin' ripped open her apartment door and like, this was before wrestling. You don't even get me started, but yes, now she's happily married and, uh, you know, she has a baby and I'm an, you know, an auntie. It's pretty sick. Yeah. That's so she, she has healed. Well, okay. So where can we find Jody Threat on social media? Because I know you're going to do a better job now that you're in a bigger company and you got to yes. be more on it. You got to post photos. I'm trying. You know? <laughs> Let's feed photos though. Less feet photos. Less feet yeah. photos. I don't even know how they got this. I would love to know. Someone can tell me. Well, I'm sure there's probably some, you know, did you ever do a gig with Tony Atlas? That's all I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right well where can people find you uh at jody threat so j-o-d-y threat t-h-r-e-a-t and is that on all platforms jody all platforms okay listen uh to to wrap this in a bow thank you because this was a breath of fresh air uh oh, cool. i actually I, this is recording I'm not uh, saying this to say this. Lars knows that we, you know, if it's a good interview, be like, hey, thanks for coming on. But wow, you are, have just from this interview, my favorite wrestler now. Like, I am your biggest fan. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to tell you one like really funny story before we please, go. Please, please. Your time. <laughs> so this is a story for Lars. Okay. Lars, this meeting is like, yeah. I was trying to like pinpoint the year, but this might be like, 18 years in the making okay okay, okay. so you were in toronto mm -hmm. i want to say it was like cool house i can't yeah. remember yeah you were on stage i waited to like the end i feel like there was only a few shows left and i ran on stage and you were like going for a stroll are we and then i was instantly ripped off the stage and ch chucked <laughs> out the uh the venue door so like <laughs> We've met before in passing, and I've like been waiting for this day. <laughs> well, I'm super sorry you got chucked. I yeah. I really literally am. once you hug a bitch right out the door. Like, oh. 
Well, that's well, funny because I took your feet picture on a beach <laughs> four years ago and it showed up on the internet. So <laughs> we brought it all together, guys. Oh, full circle. Look at that. So, so Jody, thank you so much, guys. Go watch Impact Wrestling. They've been amazing to the show, to us. Jody, thank you. You've got two major fans in us from here on out. We promise you that. Awesome. Well, thank you.